Good evening, divine people of the You Create the Dream page, and welcome to Awake in the Dream. This is our fortnightly call. It's an opportunity to ask me anything at all. Um, it's also um, an evening where I share with you um, guidance, things that I feel need to be heard right now, all sorts of amazing bits. Um, hello, beautiful Marina, how are you? Okay, we have everything working just dandy tonight. So, hello beautiful Jane, how are you? So, um, I'm obviously in a very different space right now, as in not me, <laughs> but physically, physically. I'm actually working from my office this evening and I'm surrounded by lots of amazing gadgets. For those that have been um, on some of my previous calls, hello beautiful Sharon, how are you? Um, for those that have been on my previous calls, or especially a few weeks ago, you were introduced to the plant wave. So the music that you can hear right now is actually music that is coming through as it's basically the frequencies of this plant. Um, hello, beautiful Valerie, you managed to make it. Hello, Fiona. Good evening. Good evening, lovely ladies. I'm fine, thank you very much. There has been a lot going on in my world, um, but I am all good. So I'm just going to scroll back up for a moment to the photograph, well, to the photograph, to the footage of me. Um, so I'm not going to see the comments for a moment, just to show you some of the things that I have around me. Obviously, this is my office. Um, I have lots of crystals in here. That cabinet goes a lot further than what you can see there. But that black stone behind me, is actually the largest Morian quartz ever found in Australia. It normally lives um, in the lounge area by the fireplace, but we have had to move everything out, including all my furniture. So um, that's the largest black quartz, Morian quartz ever found in Australia. You know, I have lots of good things to share with you tonight. So let's just see, we should have a few more people on. Valerie, love that room. It is really beautiful. It is really beautiful so so lovely to see you here tonight so what i would also like to do actually is um give thanks to hello beautiful lily how are you i would love to give thanks to all of our new members thank you welcome um a very special welcome to you all now i do apologize um earlier today we actually found out that we had people that have requested to join over two weeks ago and for some reason we weren't receiving the notification notifications so we uh, logged in today and we saw that there were quite a few people that wanted to join so welcome to each and every one of you um, and i do again apologize hello beautiful mariana how are you gorgeous so for those that are new to this page um, or those that don't know me my name is joanne antoon i am founder of ctc the two-hour life transforming combined therapy cocktail I um, first and foremost, I am a, uh, a wife, a mother, the grandmother of two amazing, amazing little ones, um, extraordinarily blessed. I'm a Reiki master. I have been teaching Reiki. I have been doing CTC for over 25 years. Um, Reiki as well. I have been a Reiki master all those years. Reiki, working with energy, is a part of my life. It is actually who I am. I'm the author of three books. There's a lot of things I could tell you about me, but that's not what I'm here for. Um, I'm, I'm just, I think the message I really want to portray is that I have always, always known that my message is to show you that you are the power in your world, to have you remember the power that is you, to show you that you can transmute, transform energies, that you can easily create the life that you desire. And it starts by being free of the past, the past stories, the things that have held you back, the, the programs, the limiting beliefs, all of that stuff. And CTC does that. And actually some of our um, viewers that are on tonight are actually CTC therapists. So for all of our CTC therapists, um, or if you've studied Reiki with me, I would love for you to actually uh, let us know in the comments. So you are the power in your world. And I know that some people kind of go, well, yeah, I kind of get it. But I think the more you understand the world of energies, the more you really get it. The more you understand the world of energies, the more you're going to open yourself up to uh, receiving that which you desire. Because we might be good at putting it out there, 
but are you a good receiver? You may not even be good at putting it out there because you might not be able to hold an uninterrupted thought for an extended period of time. Why? Because the moment you have a good thought, often what happens is a shitty thought comes in, right? So it starts to interrupt the very thought that you're trying to put out there to the universe. So my intention tonight is to expand your awareness of energies, to share with you like scientific fact, really. We know that we are in a world of energies, but do we actually live from that space? So there are things I want to cover tonight. Okay, um, and of course, please feel free to ask any questions. Actually, I'm gonna start with one question that one of our new members asked. So as we were copying and pasting the questions across to our document, it was um, Joshua. That's right, Joshua had asked this question. And one of his questions related to um, when and where was I when I woke up, so to speak, right? What was going on for me? He wanted to know the very moment that I realized that what I feared was now my passion. Actually, the word he used was hate. You know, when did you realize that what you hated was actually the thing that would motivate you and drive you? So I think I'll start with that because that's also a really good lead into what I want to talk about tonight as we move into the world of energies. And, and actually another thing we're going to be doing tonight, at the end of tonight's call, I'm going to give you an undeniable experience with energies and a healing. Um, Valerie saying, I keep breaking up. Is, um, is the sound okay for everybody else? I would love to know. Also wondering if it's the music. Now, can we hear the music? Oh, Valerie's saying it's all good now. Okay. Can you actually hear the music? I would love for you to let me know. Can you hear the plant playing the music? Because that's actually going to be important, an important component for tonight. Uh, all good. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you very much, Lily. So, um, fantastic. Thank you very much, Sharon. So I've been seeing spirit since I was a very young child. My parents tell me that at three years old, I would run to their bedroom and I would be telling them of the people that I would be seeing in my room. I would be telling them of premonitions. And I was constantly told to basically shut up, stop making up stories and go back to my room. And this would happen night after night. This is just a very brief summarized version. But night after night, I would see um, people in my room and every night there were three men one of them sitting at the end of the bed one of them pacing literally pacing in my room and one of them right there in my face there was a woman that would that would appear not every night but um, many nights at the doorway she would just stand at the doorway she didn't come into my room but I was too scared to keep my eyes open because I would see them and I would be petrified and then I was too scared to close my eyes because then I'd fall asleep and have a premonition of the very things that they were telling me and they were always telling me of bad things that were going to happen and always three or four days before they happened so that was my childhood and this was back in a time where this sort of stuff wasn't accepted you were literally institutionalized and I was petrified of that so I became very quiet I became um, became very quiet I became very shy I uh, literally stopped talking it was um, an extraordinarily difficult period for me because I felt unsupported, which was a pattern I then carried. Now, the premonitions never stopped. The visions never stopped. Seeing spirit never stopped for me. It was something that remained open. And then I actually believed I was cursed. I believed that um, God hated me because night after night I would um, pray. I would pray for it to stop and it didn't stop. So then I hated God. Um, I did the uh, Tabitha from Bewitched. I would, you know, um, wiggle my nose to make it stop. Didn't work. Things that I saw on television, right? I did the I Dream of Genie nod. Nothing worked. Anyway, I believed that I was cursed. And um, it was a terrible, terrible, um, terrible belief to have, right? So then as a teenager, a woman, um, late teens, a um, woman grabbed me by my shoulders, a stranger, right? And she said to me, I see you, I know who you are. Grasp what you fear. Stop running from who you are. Now, that phrase stuck with me. Night after night, I would hear it. During the day, I would hear it. it was just, I was just constantly playing in my head. Grasp what you fear and stop running from who you are. 
So I couldn't take it anymore. I felt like I was going crazy, right? So I went outside and I literally threw my arms up to the heavens and I said, if this is what the F you want for me, then bring it on, bring it on, bring it on. I'm done, bring it on. That night I saw my very first angel. So what I learned from the experience is what you fear the most offers you the most. So that's where everything started to change for me. I started to realize that in fact, it was a gift, not a curse. But I was so petrified of what I was seeing that I was being given more of the same until I stopped fearing it. What you resist persists, right? So this, you know, what I'm sharing with you um, is really important because I want you to look at what it is in your life that you're resisting. What are you resisting and do you see it persisting? Do you see recurring patterns in your life? What are the things that you need to let go of? What are the frequencies that you're emitting to the universe that you're constantly getting more of, yet you're saying you don't want it? If I said to you right now, whatever you, whatever you do, don't think of a chocolate cake, you're going to think of a chocolate cake, right? So it's important that we understand that we're not to think about what we don't want. We, we are to think about only that which we do want. And we need to master the art of holding that thought in an uninterrupt, in uninterrupted manner. I'm a little bit tongue tied tonight in an uninterrupted manner, right? Probably because I've got so much coming through and I'm surrounded by so many amazing gadgets I want to show you. But um, yeah, so mastering the art of your mind, right? Holding the thoughts of only the things that you do want in present tense, feeling them intensely, holding it in an uninterrupted manner. So you don't have another thought coming in and negating and going, oh, no, it never works out for me. That's not going to happen or drifting off into some other thought. But being able to hold the thought and the elevated feeling is going to change your world. So um, Joshua, I'm hoping that um, answered your question. And for everybody else here, I'm hoping that you actually um, started to maybe think about your own life and where in your life you have embodied a lot of fear and when you realize that when you when you let go of that fear you realized that the fear itself the very thing that you feared became your gift so I would also love for you to share we've got everybody sharing our CTC um, music's on low okay so people can hear the plant music though okay so if you like um, Thank you very much for sharing. So we have CTC therapists here. We have Reiki practitioners here. Um, those that have done Reiki, maybe, and everybody actually, focus some intention on the plant and see if you can actually have it change, um, you know, have, change the sound basically from where you are. Watch this. I'll give it a little bit of love. So it started squealing before. And since I turned around and gave it some love, it was very different. Watch this. Now, most of you will recognize this plant from a few weeks ago when um, my son-in-law Liam gave it to me and it has grown so much. We have two new leaves and he was blown away by the growth. And I said to him, that's because it's actually being heard for the first time, literally being heard. Okay, so just like I was shaken, rattled and rolled basically, you know, for a long time before I woke up, I feel it's happening collectively now, right? And it's happening so as to elevate us all. But here's the thing, in a more conscious, heart-based environment, we need to travel light. Um, hi, I'm not sure how to say your name. Prayer is a G silent. Please let me know if I said it correctly. Um, please let me know. So um, we need to travel light and that means doing the work. That means setting ourselves free of all that holds us back, setting ourselves free of the low vibration frequencies. We need to release that which is not a match for where we are being called to go. Now with all that's going on and it unfortunately has been for a very long time, right? Many people are feeling unsettled, so much so that a whole lot of crap is coming up for them and the desire 
to be more is arising there's a whole lot of questioning right there's a desire to understand the world of energies there's a desire to connect with the world of energies there's a desire to have undeniable experiences to sense spirit to not feel so alone to tap into the guidance you know there's all there's a lot of that going on for a lot of people right there's a deep desire to understand how it all works and to feel more connected so i have lots of things around me but many of you have seen this right and i've often shown you that for a period of time where this mess right we're in turmoil we're in our chaos but when we decide to make a change when we decide to grow when we decide to start to release low vibration thoughts and feelings and stories we the separation starts to take place right so as that happens as we shift our frequency and vibration the old has to come up to come out so often people will start on this journey um, and they will say, you know, like, I just feel like I'm in a state of turmoil all the time because things are constantly coming up. But that's a good thing, right? Because it has to come up and out. You spent a whole lot of time as this mess, burying everything everywhere. But now that you've woken, now that you've changed, now that you've stepped up, anything of lower vibration has to come up and out. So what we need to do is we need to stay in flow. Now that is being forced out of a lot of people right now. There are a lot of people that are living in denial, but they're in pain. There are a lot of people that are that feel a sense of desperation. They're wanting to step up at speed. They're wanting to grow really quickly. They don't want to do it in slow-mo, right? There's a whole lot of things going on for a lot of people. And um, a lot of people have been reaching out to me. In fact, one lady reached out, and this would have been a few weeks ago now, and she said, I just don't understand, Joanne. I just don't understand how can somebody shift so quickly you know I, I'm watching your videos I've seen people talk about you and you know watch some interviews and all these sorts of things but I don't understand how it can happen so quickly now you know why it happens quickly change requires change but the moment you change something everything changes its law the moment I put a drop of food coloring, okay, the moment I put a drop of food coloring into this glass, everything changed. Everything changed. Everything was affected, right? So when you are truly ready to change, when you are truly ready to heal, when you are truly ready to let go of the stories and the excuses and the old identity that you have hung on to for such a long time, everything starts to change at a very rapid pace basically as quickly as that oil and water separated right so another person said to me how does it work how does it work and how come i don't see spirit how come i don't see the world of energies like you do i want what you're on right i hear a lot of people say that so tonight i want to delve into all things energy and the thing is, everything is literally energy, right? It's a scientific fact that everything in the universe is made up of molecules. And those molecules are constantly you know, oscillating, right? They're constantly vibrating at various frequencies. And this is also what's going on in our physical bodies. When you start to understand that everything is energy, I am energy, this is energy, everything around me is energy. Everything is energy, right? There's no beginning or end to us. When you start to understand that everything is energy, you start to recognize that if I'm connected to absolutely everything, if I am one with source, if I am of source, then I can transmute, I can transform energy, right? Hello, beautiful Gosha, how are you? So, if you can maybe even print out an image that is going to remind you that everything is energy and do that for a period of time until you recognize it to be your absolute truth, then it's going to remind you that in each and every moment you have the capacity to change everything by simply changing your mind, by simply changing the way you see it. 
right? So everything is oscillating at a particular frequency. Our body is oscillating at a particular frequency. The molecules within our body are constantly oscillating or vibrating, whatever you'd like to call it. They're vibrating and radiating a frequency. Now that frequency is either a high vibe or a low vibe. It's either a negative or a positive. It's unbalanced or it's balanced. It's opened or it's closed, right? When we're misaligned energetically, when we're radiating low vibrational frequencies, it can manifest itself in our, in our reality as a chaotic life, as a, a unfulfilling life, a life where you witness everybody else living a life of magic it seems to be working out for everybody else and not you right that's that's what happens when we're misaligned when we are not in alignment when we are not in flow and it also then plays itself out in our physical bodies as pain aches illness um, or even dis-ease or disease right so when it comes to working with energies and healing we work with the principle that energy can be transformed because everything is energy right we can easily change the space within us and around us now let me give you proof of that how many times has every been everything been fine at home and then somebody walks in and they're in a bad mood and suddenly you can cut the air with a knife it's a very real tangible feeling right everything changes everything changes or you're feeling fabulous and you arrive somewhere where the energy is like crap. You walk in and you feel it. it you just want to leave. You want to leave because it doesn't feel comfortable. There's something not right. Okay. So we know that the energy, the space around us can change very quickly by thought, feeling alone, right? It's the same thing within our body. The fact is that the moment that we change our mind, the very moment that we change our mind or the moment we change our perception about something, everything changes. When you change how you see things, the very things you see change. Now, what's happening when you do that? The moment you change your mind, the moment you change how you see something or the moment you find out the truth, because whatever you believed before wasn't true, right? Whatever it is. You are now literally creating a new truth, literally. Now, when you're literally creating a new truth, you are changing yourself neurochemically. And when you change yourself neurochemically, that changes absolutely everything biochemically, right? Because we're producing the chemicals here. This is our pharmacy. It's our very own pharmacy. So we're producing chemicals here. Now, because we've changed our mind and the way we see things, it's like, oh my goodness, I, you, I, I, my, my perception of it was all wrong. So now I'm feeling different, right? And my body is now producing a new set of chemicals and it's changing me biochemically, which is, just, which is changing how I feel. It's changing what I radiate and therefore changing what I'm going to attract into my life. So I've obviously been doing this work for a very, very long time. And back then, look, it wasn't accepted. It was considered as a whole lot of quackery and a whole lot of woo-woo, right? I've been considered weird my whole life. However, however, right, the gift in that, which of course I couldn't see back then, but the gift in that, it was you know, my desperate desire to try to prove to people that what I was seeing was real to try and prove to people that the world of energies exist, to try and prove to people that I'm not some weirdo. So I became the person that, um, you know, I, I would study a lot and I would try to find ways to articulate the world of energies to people. I would, you know, and one thing I love, it's one thing to brighten a light bulb, like a person, to brighten them because they're already on the path, but to turn a non-believer into a believer, I next level next level why because as a child i battled the non-believers right so um because of my desire to prove to people that i wasn't weird 
I started collecting a whole lot of gadgets, right? And what I'm going to share with you tonight are things that I've had, look, they're all within 12 years, 12, 13 years, they're probably about 13 years, these ones here. I have many other things I'd collected over, the over time, but now they're sort of pretty much null and void. So I collected these gadgets because I wanted to show everybody that this stuff works, right? Um, Valerie, returning from overseas, not interested in TV at all, not even programs that I used to like, and have found a new love for music and listening to music, feeling much better, more in alignment. Fantastic, Valerie. Thank you so much for sharing. And this is what I've said to a lot of people in the past, right? You've got to do whatever it takes that keeps you in alignment. If you feel better and more aligned, surrounding yourself with beautiful things, with beautiful music and, and what have you, then great, do that because you staying in alignment and in your happy bubble is the best thing you can do for all of us. For those that are prepared to look at what's really going on and go down rabbit warrens and what have you, blast a whole lot of light and still maintain alignment um, and be in your happy bubble, then do that. But if it's too hard, you know, I think the most important thing to always do is remain in alignment. And you've got to remain in alignment for all of us, right? But also for your own health, for um, a greater quality of life for yourself as well. So Valerie, thank you so much for sharing that. So I've lived a life where, um, and look, and I have so many personal stories that I could share with you. I won't be sharing many tonight, but um, over the years, I've accumulated a lot of evidence from my personal experiences, from personal stories and the witnessing of miracles that take place with my clients and with my students. And it is all energy related. But the beautiful thing is we now have registered scientific data that proves that all this is real, right? And I mean, Valerie here in our group is a miracle. Valerie, you are an incredible woman and you are an incredible miracle. And many people here with us um, on this page and in my other programs have had the most amazing undeniable experiences and shifts within their physiology and within their life. So um, what I'm gonna share with you tonight, a couple of things, and these are all things you can do research on. Um, this is the G, uh, GDV. Now, the GDV monitor, um, I do actually need to send this overseas. It needs a, hard, um, a hardware update. So not software, unfortunately, hardware. So I have to send it back. But this particular gadget, you simply place your finger. Uh, Valerie, I am, and I'm on cloud nine. Yes, you should be, honey. I celebrate you. So you would basically just put your finger onto the glass screen that's inside of this, which I can show you, little glass screen. And what it does is it sends a pulse that you actually can't feel. It's a little electric shock, but you can't feel it because it's very minimal. And at the moment it does that, it's almost like your, your response, your body response is like a gas discharge, right? And it photographs it. Now, what it's doing is it's actually reading. This device is a medical device used in over 40 countries, in hospitals, in universities, in medical clinics, a remarkable device. Um, it reads every level of your body. It will read your organs, your skeletal system, your energy levels, um, every, every organ, everything, everything in your body, every layer of your body, including your aura and your chakra alignment with this device, completely non-invasive, completely non-invasive. This is the machine that was used for um, the photographs that you would see in my latest book, Cut the Crap. We would do a reading before a CTC session and after a CTC session to show the differences. There are so many gadgets, okay, that, um, look completely non-invasive, completely non-invasive, but do remarkable things. Now this same GDV unit, uh, and we have some people here in this group that were actually in the class I'm going to talk about. Um, I can attach this to the same unit and what it will do is put, I put my finger in to read the body, but when I attach this, it starts to read the space 
okay, the environment. So we had this set up during one of my CTC trainings and we were constantly reading the space in the uh, the environment, sorry, the energy and the frequency in the environment. We were monitoring it and depending on what work we were doing, we would see things obviously change. We then drove 10 minutes away to a local river. We did a meditation at the river and we continued to change the frequency here in our training space. So even though we weren't physically present, we were changing a space somewhere different and we weren't focusing on the room. But again, this proved that no matter where we are, if we can hold an intention, if we can come into center, if we can elevate ourselves, if we can raise our vibration, we affect the space around us and everything else in existence everything else in existence. Now, I can't tell you, I know we would have been changing the frequency all over the world, right? I know that, but I can't prove that to you because I only had this gadget sitting here, which was 10 minutes away from where we were. So I gather the tools, I do the readings to show that everything, that energy exists, that if we master our mind, our feelings if we change how we feel we raise our vibration and everything changes you can heal yourself you can change your life Valerie I've got to go I'll definitely listen to the replay love you sweetheart this is the same the GDV unit um, this is a water probe right so I filled a glass of water and this same group the same class I'm, I was talking about with the this is called Sputnik spiky one is put there we filled a glass of water a glass with water we measured it then we sent light just with our hands either through mind alone or we put our hands in the direction of the glass but we were sending intention and light to the glass we changed the uh, it's all measurable we changed the measurements we changed the taste of the water everybody affirmed that it was or confirmed that it was a lot sweeter now we have two ladies from that group here in this class mariana and um mariana and fiona i believe he's still so um and i actually have photographs which i dug up today of them actually doing it okay i will actually pull them up in a moment once i talk about this next thing so we didn't turn the water into wine However, had we have worked on it a little bit longer, we may have, right? Through thought alone, we were able to change the frequency and the taste of the glass of water. There is also evidence that you can hold a glass of water, literally hold it in your hands and ask that it provides you with everything that you need. The perfect medicine for you you hold it for a few minutes, the frequency changes and then you drink it. Measurable evidence that you can do that. I want you to remember how powerful you are. I have, yeah, look, sure I have the gadgets. I have the gadgets to, because I need, I became somebody that wanted to gather proof and evidence, right? But I want you to remember, like what if? I, I want you to leave this call with an attitude of what if? What if it's true? What if I can? So hold a glass of water, hold the intention. Place a note under a glass of water. Place a note saying, I love myself, I am, I am healed. This is my tonic for good health. Place a glass on top of that note. Come back to it and drink it. And if you like, try it. I mean, you could maybe put two glasses, one separate to the note one on the note and see if you notice a difference try it what if what if you are the power in your world everything is energy everything that exists is energy the glass is energy the water is energy everything is energy so you can transform energy you can transform it into anything you want the same way someone can walk into a room 
and then suddenly there's tension in the air. The same way somebody can walk in the room and suddenly everything feels uplifted because they're just, they're carrying this vibration and frequency that has elevated the whole. Be that person. Be that person. So then we have our mind lamp, which a lot of people have played with before, also in my CTC classes and um, in my online programs we also use that there now the mind lamp has an reg monitor in it now and the reg monitors i'm not going to go into a lot of detail but they've been used globally and they have shown without um without a doubt that the collective consciousness is affecting the whole that we affect everything including earth's magnetic field 100 percent proof it also proved, um, the REG monitors also proved that at the time of Lady Di's death, four hours, uh, sorry, I think it was Lady Di's death might have been, yeah, it was, I think that was about four hours as well, but the September 11, four hours before September 11, there was a massive shift in Earth's magnetic field, which basically proved that there was some sort of precognition that everybody had a feeling something wasn't quite right or certainly a huge amount of people had a feeling that something wasn't quite right and that feeling rippled and changed everything including earth's magnetic field then of course there were people that were feeling you know immense sadness and compassion for a, a week the same thing happened september 11 and lady die so our feelings our thoughts matter which means what which means you matter which means you are an incredibly powerful being and you have the capacity to change the energy everywhere so if you can change the energy everywhere imagine what you could do for yourself imagine what you could do for yourself this mind lamp through thought alone thought and feeling it runs on a color wheel right through thought and feeling we change the color of it. We literally change the color. Now, what I do is I split people into two groups. I've done it with, you know, crowds on stage of more than 500 people. And this is a smaller workshop. I dug up these photos today, but you can see, and Mariana, I don't know if you're still on, but this is Mariana and Tanya. Um, let me see, actually, I need to come back up to you from just to, I need to see what you can see. So I don't know if I'm positioning it correctly. Okay. So I don't know if you can make out the color. It's actually yellow, but they're trying to change the color of this mind lamp. And here they are because they won the battle, right? There was, I think, two against three for this particular training. Um, I'll show you the other one in a moment. Let me come back down to you. So I want, I want you to share with me if this is making sense. Do you, are you starting to realize, Mariana, we won. Yes, you did. Yes, you did, honey. And what an amazing, amazing training that was. Mariana was actually here when we used the GDB with the Sputnik and did the water measurements as well. We are extraordinarily powerful beings. What if, I want you to walk away from tonight's call with a what if feeling for everything what if I could change that what if I could really heal myself what if by simply opening yourself up to the possibilities you're inviting a new way of thinking you're inviting a new way of being as well right so what I also have here and this was only started in the 21st of July rice experiment and I'm doing this very differently to, to the way I've done it in the past Need to come back up so I can see what you guys see. So I, don't, I won't see the comments for a moment. Okay. So normally what I would do is cook rice on the stove top, not in a rice cooker, on a stove top, and because there's a bit more moisture that way, and put them into jars and they turn very, very quickly. This one here I decided just fresh rice. So I pop the rice in the jars and I top them up with water. Now I haven't paid them any attention. What you're normally meant to do is give love to the loved one and a bit of love to the loved one and the um, the hate one, you tell it off, right? I haven't done that to either of them. 
So I actually set this experiment up again for myself, um, for my grandchildren and my niece and nephew. Now you can see the difference already. 21st, I need to turn that one. 21st of July. 21st of July, and you can see that this one's a bit yucky and dark, right? Just like food is alkaline or acidic, so too are your thoughts. So if we know that food is alkaline or acidic, and we know that alkaline foods are better for us, they affect our bodies in a healthier way, right? Your thoughts, your negative thoughts about yourself, affect you physically negative thoughts okay affect you physically and they affect your entire life again look at the difference All right they would normally turn a whole lot more quickly if i had cooked them on the on the stove top but i decided to try them do it differently i'm going to show you again here this was back, it's not an April Fool's joke, but the 1st of April, 2010. So you'll see I have the two, two jars. Okay, there's a positive and a negative. 18 days later, again, they weren't given any attention. 18 days later. Then we have 12th of May and the 3rd of June. The 12th of May, 3rd of June. These are screenshots from a presentation that I do, a stage presentation that I do. What you think also has a vibration and a frequency. How you feel is a vibration and a frequency. How is it that you are affecting your body and your life? What energy, what frequency are you aligned to? What is it you're attaching yourself to? Is this starting to land for everybody? I really felt the need tonight to talk about energies and, and just bombard you with things to have you understand that we have the power to change things. We have the power through mind and thought alone to change the color of the lamp. It is literally, when we have two groups going, it is literally a tug of war and you can see it heading towards one color and then the other and then suddenly it flips. We have the technologies to measure the space around us, to measure the energy within us. This plant, this plant is emitting a frequency. And what this company have done is each frequency, each feeling of the plant is attached to a particular um, musical instrument and note. The plant is playing the music that you are hearing. Okay, the plant is doing it. It loves the love. It loves the love. Energy medicine is based on the premise that we are energy. We have an energetic life force and the energy centers within us are an essential part of our of our health of how we live our life of how we feel about ourselves and when we're in alignment we're healthy we function well also and energy healing also works on the premise that energy can be transformed that we can change things so it loves the love it loves the love Energy cannot be created or destroyed, but it can be transformed through thought and feeling alone. So one documented study, a scientific study that comes to mind right now is um, 
done by Dr. William Bengston, I think his name was. So first and foremost, he was a scientist, but the world of energies intrigued him, right? He, um, he wanted to understand more about this healing thing. So he did an energy healing course, very similar to Reiki, right? He did an energy healing course and his first experiment was on mice. Now, these mice were intentionally bred to have cancer, okay? They were basically used in the um, pharmaceutical industry, right? So to test pharmaceuticals. They would all die by the 27th day, okay? It's the 27th day after they had been injected. I'm just going to turn this down a little bit. 27th day after they had been injected with, um, with cancer. So he knew that if he could actually get them to live longer than the 27 days, then his results would be significant because they always died by the 27th day. He trained a very skeptical team of colleagues, right? His colleagues were not into it at all, but he trained a very skeptical team of colleagues at the um, City, City University in New York, I think it was. Now he showed them how to do this hands-on healing technique and they used this technique on these lab mice. Now the lab mice had already been given the injections and these injections um, specifically induced mammary cancer, right? The results were absolutely incredible. Not only did his team manage to prolong their lives, right? To keep the mice alive longer than usual, but they actually cured them. They actually cured them of cancer by energy healing scientific evidence scientifically documented they repeat they sorry, repeated the um, experiment over and over and over again they did it on thousands of mice and the result was exactly the same each and every time every time they did it again and again the uh, mice were healed now here's the interesting thing not only were they healed of the cancer but when they tried to re-inject them with the cancer again, it didn't take. They didn't get it. They were now unable to even get the disease. Something about the energy or the energy treatment had now made them immune to it. All the mouse, all the mice, sorry, previous to this experiment died at the 27th day. What changed was the energy work. What changed was energy. Remember, energy can be transformed. Remember, you are energy. Everything in existence is energy. And if we start to look at it as energy, if we start to realize that the lack and scarcity programming that has taken place for generations is just a BS story, when we start to realize that everything is energy, that we can, that there is no difference between the car space or the car, uh, the, the physical car itself, where it's all just energy, where we stop thinking, oh, I can easily manifest a car space, but there's no way I can manifest the car. When we start to realize that they are all, I mean, I've got a really bad cramp in my leg. Uh, when we start to realize that they are all one in the same, you can send some energy to my leg, <laughs> undo, the, undo the cramp. Um, we start to realize that it is all one in the same then we start to realize that all I need to do is be in alignment with that which I desire and it shall be mine. It shall be mine because that's the only thing. The reason you're not manifesting it so easily right now is because you think that it's too big, that it's too valuable, that it is more than you are worth. So there are issues with your worthiness and that's why you need to recognize that you are worthy. You were born worthy. You will always be worthy that you are worthy of receiving, that it is all just energy. And what if, what if, what if opens you up to possibilities? What if, what if you really could have it all? What if you stopped blocking yourself from having it all? The only reason you don't have it all is because you've blocked yourself from having it all. What if? So, as an, energy as an energy healer, we channel this beautiful, unlimited life force 
through us to the person that we're working with. We do it with the intention of restoring balance, to remove blockages, to make them whole again. We hold the highest vision because if, it, if I can hold the highest vision for you, then the universe knows what it needs to do to get you in alignment with that. And if you can hold that highest vision, and if your friends and family can also hold that highest vision, then what we're doing is we're all transmuting energy. We are all transforming energy and plugging into the highest vision that allows you to get from here to there at speed. So we hold the, the highest vision to invite flow, to invite balance, to invite harmony and vitality because the body does know how to heal itself. Remember, it is just energy. So we're inviting that balance, that, that harmony to come back to the body so that you can experience a life filled with vitality, so that you can experience a life filled with amazing health. For those that have done Reiki training with me, you have no doubt had incredible and undeniable experiences with working with this amazing energy. And the more we work with it, the more we open ourselves up to this amazing and divine light, the more that we're in flow. And the more we're in flow, the more magical our life becomes, the more sensitive we become to the world of energies and the more we're able to help other people, the more we're able to guide and assist other people, the more we're able to channel this amazing healing energy for them. I am so blessed to witness miracles each and every day. Every single day. So how is it that the healing actually happens, right? I want to just touch on that a little bit. Our energetic and physical bodies are entwined or intertwined, right? There's, there's no separation. There, is, there can't be any separation. Every experience that you have ever been through, every hardship, every trauma that you carry, all of it, the good, the bad, the ugly, all of it, right, is literally stored in data banks within our body, right? And these are otherwise known as chakras, right? So they're stored in the chakras and our chakras store information. And this information becomes our frequency that is rippling through our body, right? It affects us physically. It affects our life. I can assure you that there will always, always, always be an emotional issue, an emotional cause behind your physical issues always whether it's a karmic thing whether it's some you know emotional thing that's happened in a past life and you've brought this in karmically whether it's karmically whether it's a toxicity because of an unprocessed emotion because of a trauma that you experience in this life whether it's something that you know that you need to do but you've not been brave enough to commit and take action Whatever it is, there is always going to be an emotional cause behind it. Because sometimes the universe says, you know what, I'm going to have to hit you hard because you're not paying attention. Deep down, you know what it is that you need to do. You're not doing it. And the only way I know how to get your attention because you're not listening to the little whispers, the little whispers, you're not listening, you're not aware of the little taps and nudges that we're giving you. Or maybe you are aware, but you're in fear. So the buck stops here. But it's not ever happening to us, it's happening for us. There is always an opportunity for growth. No matter what goes on, there is always an opportunity for growth. You are never, ever, ever sent anything that you can't handle. So in order to remain healthy, the body needs the energy to flow. A healthy body has to be in flow. The energy itself can't keep coming up against roadblocks right it can't keep crashing up against you, the fears and the issues and the things that you're hanging on to because if it keeps on doing that there's a constant you are you are in a state of constant um disturbance right and when you're in that state where it's the the there's no flow it's constantly banging 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 right and you're in literally psychological reversal which is you pumping a whole lot of cortisol through your body Right, you end up creating physical, mental and emotional issues for yourself. In my Reiki classes, 
I teach a very, very powerful process that is actually one of our CTC processes where we tap into the emotional cause behind the ailment or the illness. Like what is really going on? Why is it here? What message does it have for you? What is it you need to do in order for it to go away? So we tap into that so that you understand what it is that you need to let go of in order to heal. So what are we doing when we do that? We're again transforming energy because everything is energy and energy can be transformed. Energy cannot be created. Energy cannot be destroyed. You want to go and destroy the illness? What you resist persists, right? You want to destroy, destroy. You're going, it's, going to, it's not going to work. But once we communicate with it, once we understand why it's here, what message it has for us, we change, it changes. Why? Because when one thing changes, everything changes. When one thing changes, everything changes. So do let me know if you have any questions at all. I'm hoping this is landing for everybody. I really feel it's an important topic to share right now. The world is in the state it is in because of the collective energies. We can change energies and we start with ourselves. If we remain high vibing, if we hold a particular frequency and that, that frequency is naturally affecting the whole, but if we elevate those around us, then we're lifting the consciousness of humanity at a far greater pace. There is no single person on this planet that is any more special than anybody else. The only thing is that there are some people that are a little bit more practiced, but no one is more special. You don't need to be on the spiritual path in order to be receptive to healing. You don't need to be sensitive, you know, sensitive to feeling energies to have a desire to receive. You just need to be open to allowing yourself to receive. Again, what if? What if? Think about our breath. Just think about the breath. The breath, this is our life force. If you're a poor receiver, if you're not even allowing yourself to receive the breath, the very life force that is given to you to keep you alive, then how can you be a good receiver for anything else? So what if you started by breathing deeply? What if you started by breathing more consciously, by giving thanks to the breath by breathing in the new and with the exhale releasing the old. What if you started by making small changes like that? What if you recognized that we are all energy, that everything is energy and that and chose consciously to remember that and just to blast a little bit of light everywhere that you go? What if you chose to intentionally work with energy healing to work with reiki to channel light and to bless others to heal yourself what if what if i've personally been working with reiki um, energy healing for 25 years and honestly and truly i work with it literally every single day many times a day definitely more than once, many, many times a day. I go to bed at night, I place my hands on, I feel the energies, I have a little game that I play with energies. I send healing to, I wear the heart, the earth pendant, I send healing from my heart out to the planet, to all of humanity many, many times a day. It is a go-to anytime there is a challenge. It is a go-to if I happen to witness an accident somewhere. It's immediately I am blasting light, I am blasting light because I know that energy can be transformed. I know that energy can be transformed. We're going to very soon, but you know, at the end of this call, do an energy exercise where you can feel and experience the world of energies. And through intention, we are going to fill this ball of energy with everything that you need and then you are going to bring it into your body. Energy can be transformed. I want you to remember that. 
um, Lily, what's the best frequency sound to listen to for healing? Um, let me see what it was. I might be incorrect off the top of my head. I think it was four, not 440. Was it 440? There's, I have a whole lot of different frequencies, honey, around, um, which I, I will actually post them into here, into the comments after the call um, for uh, enhanced intuition, obviously deep sleep, um, opening your third eye. There are lots of different frequencies. Um, healing. I'll have to double check on it. I'll have to double check. It's not coming to me straight away. I spoke to somebody um, who went to this exclusive place to heal and he said that um, all they did was use sound and light therapy for healing. Yeah, 100% and intention and intention. So um, light, think about the color. You've done Reiki with me, honey. Think about the color of the chakras, right? That's what the light is. Specific colors for specific chakras. Now, the other thing you can do with that if you find yourself suddenly drawn to a particular color, it is because your body, your intuition is drawing it to you. Let's say you never wear green tops and you're shopping and for some reason you're drawn to green. It is because you need it. You can um, get cellophane paper. And I did this many, many years ago, Cell oh, lots of different colors of cellophane paper and I would wrap it around glasses of water. So I was infusing that color into the water again making my medicine, so to speak. Um, I love holding with the intention. I would hold and I would infuse intention into my drinks. 432. Um, sorry, yes, it could be. It, it could be. I, I will actually copy them into um, Mind Vibrations, DNA Healing. Yes, um, Sharon, thank you very much for mentioning that. I do have them, the Mind Vibrations music. I would highly recommend everybody look it up mind vibrations have some fantastic tracks they sound beautiful they're not it's not just the noise the tone it's actually backed with beautiful music so i'd highly recommend that um so energy can be transformed right i'm going to keep on repeating it over and over and over and over and over again because you are in a, shortly going to feel energy between your hands we're going to build up energy you're going to be transforming the energy between your hands into exactly what it is that you need what if you made a commitment to doing that each and every day what if you surrounded yourself with the color what if you made your medicine if you changed water jesus turned water into wine apparently right we turn water into something sweeter. Maybe if we worked on it, Fiona and uh, Mariana, we could have turned it into wine. But we have this incredible ability to transform everything. Why? We transform everything because everything is energy. That's so me with um, green tops. Mariana, okay, never liked green before. In the last two years, attracted to green a lot. Okay, healing, deep healing. Green is the color of healing. And it is the heart, right? It's healing all things to do with the heart. So there you go. And it makes perfect sense. It makes perfect, perfect sense, Mariana. Even the more I think about it, the more I realize it makes perfect sense. So the laying on of hands with the intention to heal is extraordinarily powerful. The simple act of laying, for myself personally, the simple act of laying my hands on keeps me living a life of awe and keeps me living in a very magical existence. To be able to help people, whether it's in person or not, and we have a lot of our CTC therapists and people who have done Reiki here with me right now. I would love for you actually to share some of your experiences. Like when have you had amazing experiences with the world of energies? hands on, whether it's on yourself or whether it's doing distant healing or hands on somebody. To feel energy move through you is incredible. I mean, how can it not have you feeling, you know, magical and feeling so incredibly grateful and an awakening, a sense of awe within you? It brings the mystical into our daily life. We've all had incredible experiences by simply choosing to work with energy by choosing to remember that everything is energy. I have countless amazing stories, like so, so many stories. I have used the divine energy, the source to work, you know, I have allowed it to work through me in the most amazing of places. I have been places where it's been an emergency, where literally people have dropped right next to me, where horrible things have happened and no bells, no tools, no whistles, no crystals, no nothing else was needed. I have my hands, 
I have my, the power of my heart. I have the power of intention. And straight away, I was able to create magic. Why? Because of that one principle. Everything is energy and energy can be transformed. Everything is energy and energy can be transformed. No bells, no tools, no whistles required. And the more we come back into our center, the more we start to realize that, hang on a minute, let's just say you know, something has triggered you. Hang on a minute, you stop and you bring yourself back into center. What are you doing? Transforming energy. I, can, I was triggered and I'm angry or whatever it is that's going on for you. And you start to realize what you're doing. You pull yourself back into center. You breathe, you come back. Now you're feeling better. What have you done? You have transformed energy. You have transformed energy. Reiki transcends time and space. So whether you're wanting to receive healing, you know, in person or whether you're wanting healing for yourself or, um, sorry, it's the same, same, right? Whether you're wanting to receive healing yourself, whether you're wanting to learn how to help others, it's a magical, magical tool to have for self or others. So before we um, do our little magical exercise, I do want to say for those that are interested in Reiki, I have a workshop coming up on the 24th and 25th of September. Okay, it's an on live online program. So live online. It is um, exactly the same as the in-person sessions or in-person trainings. You will immediately feel energies. You'll be channeling amazing energies. You'll learn about chakras. You'll see auras and a whole lot more. So do feel free to contact me if um, you'd like more information on that. But that's not what I'm here for. Valerie, I'm back. Valerie, you are back just in time. Just in time, honey. So... Um, and I would actually recommend maybe even listening to the, the middle section. But we are now going to build up energies. We're going to build up energies. We're going to put the intention to receive whatever it is that you want to receive. And we're going to embody that new frequency. So we're going to do that together now. I just, I'll give my, the plant a little bit of love for a moment first. How beautiful. So it is literally being heard, literally being heard. All righty. So what I would like you to do is to start rubbing. You'll see where if you were to fold your fingers over, your middle finger sort of touches the center of your palm. So you're going to rub, I'll use my thumb, but you're going to rub the center of your palm. It doesn't matter which palm because we're going to be doing both for about 10 seconds. So let's rub the center of one palm. And the other. <clears throat> now we're going to tap our thumbs together. Now our pinkies. Now the tips of our fingers. Now tapping the back of our hands. So we're gonna... And the other. Tapping the wrists. <clears throat> now keep tapping 
your wrist. I want you to take a deep breath in. Deep breath in again. Rubbing your hands together. Now as you rub your hands together, I want you to start to think about what it is that you desire. What energy you'd like to receive. Because we're going to transform the space between our hands. And now placing your hands apart, maybe 30 centimeters or so. Palms facing each other. You start to feel that energy build up between your palms. You can bring your hands together towards each other just a little bit and then separate them again. Notice that as you separate them, this ball of energy might want to actually get bigger. You might bring them towards each other again, start to separate them and that ball of energy might get a whole lot bigger. Mine's actually wanting to get really big right now. Allow your hands to do whatever it is that feels right. Yeah, mine's wanting to expand a whole lot. Feel that energy, be aware of that energy, that build up of energy, that huge ball between your hands, that ball of energy. Feel it, you can play with it if you like. Allow it to do whatever it needs to do. And now with this energy, this energy there between your hands, I want you to place intention into that energy. What is it you would like to receive? Breathe slowly, deeply, rhythmically while you do this. What is it you would like to receive? And as you think about the things that you'd like to receive, start the sentence with thank you. Thank you for. Thank you. I ask and allow myself to receive. So think about the things that you'd like to receive. And now I want you to imagine light flowing through your heart and into this energy as well. And the moment you feel that light flowing through your heart and into that big ball of energy, notice how you feel. Notice what you feel in your body, in your hands. Just notice the differences. Now start to bring your hands a little closer, condensing that energy. Condensing that energy, that energy that contains all that you need. All the love, the healing, the guidance, the abundance, the good health, all of it, all the things that you've asked for are there in that energy. Condensing it, condensing it and affirming, thank you, thank you. I'm so grateful. I allow myself to receive. I allow myself to receive and then draw this energy into your heart, like physically pull this ball of energy in and place it in your heart center, touching your heart center, breathing it in, breathing it in, feeling that energy, that light expanding, filling your entire body now. And then if you like, you can swirl that energy around your body, around you and through you. Feeling it, becoming one with it. And when you're ready, giving thanks. 
and I would love for you to share with me how you feel. I would love to know how that was for you. Whilst I wait for the comments to come through, I will give the plant a little bit of love. It responds immediately. So I would love to know how that was for you. Did you feel the energies between your hands? Were your hands also wanting to move further apart? Was that ball of energy huge? How did it feel when you radiated light from your heart into that energy ball? How did it feel when, it, when you brought it into your body? So I would love for you to share. And happy spring. We are a couple of days into spring, aren't we? Five days, five days into spring. Still a little chilly here in Kuma. It was, um, started to warm up a little bit last week, but it's been freezing. The wind has been freezing this week. Okay, so there is a delay in receiving um, comments. I would love for you to share, even if you share once I end this call, it is perfectly fine. Here we go. Um, vibrations beautiful beautiful thank you so much for sharing please let me know if I'm saying your name correctly is it um, Praya pra Pragya please I, I don't want to offend so I'd like to make sure I'm saying your name properly Sharon <clears throat> energy was amazing I feel excited for what's possible I feel elevated and at peace beautiful beautiful and everything is possible why because everything is energy and energy can be transformed Everything is energy. There isn't a single thing in our existence that is not energy. Beautiful, Valerie, I feel an immense wave of joy and love. Energy was intense. Ball of energy was quite big and wanted to get bigger. As we um, as we condensed the energy, it was getting stronger. Beautiful. Uh, second was correct. So Pragya. Prague, yeah. Pragya? Yeah? Beautiful. Um, welcome. Welcome. So lovely to have you here. Um, lots of tingles. Yes, I also had lots of tingles. I had... Um, lots and lots of tingles. Lily, peaceful, felt um, felt them coming together naturally. That is so fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing. So try doing that exercise frequently. For those that have done Reiki, um, Reiki training, simply put your hands on. But it's also nice to have those experiences where you can feel that tangible energy and frequency in your space. Um, we have another comment that's come in. Really, um, a bit of sun here but still cold yeah look last last week um, I've got some blossoms on my fruit trees already but um, last week I um, got in the garden I did a whole lot of planting and um, I, we still get uh, frost in October every year but um, I did plant a little bit early but I have used again white light energy energy can be transformed so what I've been doing is putting a bubble of white light over my gardens to protect them from the heavy frost so energy can be transformed i want you to learn to play children look at the world in awe and wonderment children believe that everything is possible when you come back into that space where you believe that everything is possible where you, there is no lack where you know that you are worthy of having it all where you can have it all then you can have it all everything that you desire is there you just need to allow it in. Much, much love to you all. I wish for you the most amazing couple of weeks and I look forward to seeing you in two weeks. Good night, everybody. Agosha, elevated and calm, lots of tingling, big ball of energy, wanting to get bigger, fantastic feelings. I'm so happy, Gosha. Enjoy it, do it often, do it often. Everything is energy. We live in a magical existence. Don't worry about the shit show that they're showing you. <laughs> it's magic. It's magic. It's never changed. There is so much magic and it's up to us to create an amazing field of magic to elevate the whole and to bring humanity to a space where we're living from a heart-based consciousness. You are so very welcome, everybody. Good night.